In this video, we're going to talk about tangent lines. A tangent line is a line that touches the circle only once. You also want to remember we have the point of tangency. And something special happens here. So from A to B, I have what we call the radius. It goes from the center to the edge of the circle. And then I also have this tangent line. One property that I know is that it creates a perpendicular intersection, which means that that angle is 90 degrees. The theorem for this property states that if a line is tangent to a given circle, then the tangent line is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. So again, what you see here is that line M, and this is the name of the line, this lowercase cursive letter, line M is tangent to this circle and it creates a 90 degree or perpendicular intersection right here at the point of tangency. Now we can use that property or theorem or rule or fact to help us solve problems like you see here below. Given that BD is a tangent line and that the radius of circle A is 5 centimeters and BD is 12, determine what ED is. So ED is this section right here that's labeled by X. That's the piece that we're looking for. And as I can see, I have my radius here. I have my tangent line, both of which are already labeled. And I know that at my radius and my, and my point of tangency, it's going to create a 90 degree angle. Once I label the triangle, I see that it's a right triangle, which means I can use the Pythagorean theorem to help me answer this question. Now, I'm not going to solve just for this missing piece. I'm going to solve for the entire hypotenuse. And we know the hypotenuse is always C. Now I'm going to plug the numbers in and solve accordingly. So 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. When I add these two numbers together, I get 169. And the last step to get C by itself here is to take the square root. So that means the entire hypotenuse equals 13. So now if I wanna solve just for this missing piece, I'm going to plug in what I know. So what you may not have realized is that from A to E, this is also a radius, so I can go ahead and label that five as well. And since I know that the entire leg, AD, is 13, all I'm gonna do is subtract the five, and I will be left with eight. In the second problem, we are going to also use what we know about the radius and a tangent line of a circle to solve the problem. In this one, I can also see that the image has given me some additional information here. I can see that I have a little dash here and here. So if I know that this side is a 4, then I know that these sides are also 4 because they all have that congruent mark there. 
I also see that this line is tangent to this radius, so I know that this is going to create a 90 degree angle. So now I can see my right triangle, so I can set up my a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, in this problem, I'm also solving for the hypotenuse, so I'm going to plug in A and B as I know it. Since this side is the diameter, I know it's going to be 8 squared. After you square the 4 and square the 8, you get 16 plus 64, which is going to equal 80. And the last step to get C by itself would be to take the square root. Now the instructions do say two decimals. So when I put this in the calculator, I'm going to get 8.94. And I do know that it's centimeters. Based on what was given here, it said four centimeters. Here we're going to talk about the converse of the previous theorem. So previously we said that this radius and this tangent line created a perpendicular intersection. Well now what we're saying is if the intersection is perpendicular, then this line, which is called M in this case, must be tangent. So it's proving the exact backwards of what we were just doing. So converse, again, is like saying the backwards or opposite version and again, what we're trying to say is that if the intersection is perpendicular then the line must be tangent. So pretty much what we're going to be doing is, in order to prove whether a line is tangent or not, it should fit a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So for example, this says, is line m a tangent line? So it wants to know, is this line tangent? Well, if it was tangent, this would be a 90 degree angle, this would be my hypotenuse, and that would be my A, B, and C. So if I plug this in and I get a true statement, that means that it is, in fact, tangent. So here I'm going to have 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 6 squared, 9 plus 16 equals 36. 25 does not equal 36, so this cannot be true. This line right here is not tangent. So we're going to try it again with the next one. So if this line is tangent, then this should be a perpendicular intersection, which again means that my a squared plus b squared equals c squared should work. And if it doesn't, that just means, no, the line is not tangent. So this is my hypotenuse here. And I can see I'm missing this piece, but again, this is my radius. So if this is 6, this must be 6 as well. So the whole thing must be 9. So I have 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 9 squared. 100 does not equal 81, so this also, this line must also not be tangent. Here, we learned that if two segments from the same exterior point, like you see here, if two segments from the same exterior point are tangent to a circle, then they are congruent. So here I see point A, which is an exterior point, and I have two lines, both of which are tangent to this circle. So that means that this side must be congruent to that side. I can, so a statement that I would make 
would be something like AB is congruent to AC because they are from the same exterior point and in this case the exterior point was A. So if that's true, I can use that information to help me solve problems like so. And even in the diagram here, I got a lot of different things going on. I have an exterior point that's both going to this circle, making tangent lines. So that means that this side is equal to this side. I can see I have two radii here, which create two right angles that are also congruent. And then I can see that this shares a side. So I know that I have two congruent triangles for a lot of different reasons. So let's use what I know. So in this um, instructions, it gave me some information and I went ahead and labeled it on the triangle. So you should do the same thing. And there's one piece of information that's really helpful. So I can see from here to here, it's 13. And I'm coming from this exterior point, which is E. Well, that means from E to D must also be 13. If this whole segment is 20 and this piece is 13, well, then this piece must be 7. And again, I can see this is an exterior point. So if this is 7, from here to here must also be 7. But again, if the whole thing is 12, 12 take away the 7 gives me 5, which means this piece must also be 5. So from A to F, it must equal 5. So actually what happened is once I labeled it, I actually kind of worked backwards and unpeeled it until I got back around to the end.